Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ben from Check Tutors, and today we're going to go over the psychology concept of obedience. <laughs> so, in this video, we're going to first define what obedience is, and then we're going to look at a famous case study called Milgram's Experiment in Obedience. And, we're and then we're going to wrap it up by going over a few, a few key influencing factors on obedience. So, um, in psychology, obedience is the tendency to comply with the commands of those in authority. So, the definition is pretty much what you would uh, imagine obedience to be, in uh, from what you can uh, get from like common usage of the term. But so, why is obedience important important in psychology? Well, psychologists study obedience in order to explain how certain social factors influence human behavior. So they want to know under what circumstances obedience happens in humans, and why. So let's look at the most famous, uh, probably the most famous case study in obedience conducted. Um, it was by Milgram in 1963, and the goal of this experiment was to learn under what, first of all, under what conditions um, humans show obedience under, and how uh, common and frequent this uh, idea of obedience is. Uh, and actually the origins of this experiment um, was to identify how easily how ordinary people in um, Nazi Germany during World War II could follow such terrible orders and on such a large scale. So uh, Stanley Milgram wanted to identify what kind of factors goes behind this kind of obedience. So, uh, let's look at the setup of the experiment. So, in the experiment, um, the the volunteers, uh, there were 40 volunteers for the initial experiment, and they were the ones who were actually, um, they were the participants, and the participants were always the teachers in this three-person scenario. So what happened was they showed up, and then uh, the vol the volunteer the um, the participant and another confederate uh, drew straws in order to see who would play the teacher role and who would play the student role. And it's important to know that going into this experiment, they were under the impression that this study was based on learning uh, when it was actually about obedience. So um, the participant would draw straws with this confederate. And the, tr the straws were rigged so that the uh, participant w would always get the role of the teacher. And so the participant is always the, the teacher, and then the student is a, is a confederate, and the experimenter also is basically playing a role as a confederate because he um, he has he basically has a script for this experiment. And what happens is that uh, the scenario is that there are word pair associations. So the student is supposed to learn which word goes with which other word. And for every time that he answers incorrectly, uh, so for example, uh, the teacher would say, let's say red and blue are paired. The teacher would say blue, and the student is supposed to answer red. So there were a lot of these word pairs. And every time the student answers incorrectly, the um, teacher is supposed to administer a, a shock. And the machine looks something like this. Um, the scale is a little, a, little, uh, a little longer than this, but it started off at the very minimum shock. And then each time, uh, the shock increases in strength. And remember, this occurs each time the student gets something wrong. And since the student is a confederate, uh, he purposefully, during this each experiment, answers a lot of the questions incorrectly in order to make force the teacher to administer, administer the shocks. Now, the thing is that the student is a trained confederate who is very good at acting. And uh, in, this is important because the shock machine, the shock machine wasn't actually a shock machine. It delivered no shocks. But the, um, the trained confederate actor, uh, every time he received a shock, would give a, an appropriate reaction based on the strength of the shock. So they would like spaz out a little. And the stronger it went, uh, they would complain about pain and etc. So the idea behind this is that uh, they wanted to see at, at what point the teacher would stop administering these shocks. And in order to see 
um, how this affects how this goes with obedience they have this third person the experimenter who is there to uh, continue prodding the um, the teacher the uh, participant to keep administering these shocks if he hesitates so um, when the teacher hesitates the experimenter has four lines that they uh, read one after another and they only read the next one if the um, if the participant still continues to refuse to administer the shock and they are please continue the experiment re requires you to continue it is absolutely essential that you continue and you have no other choice but to continue and these are meant to uh, keep them going and notice that um, on the volt dial the on the electric shock machine the um, the right hand side or the, the more uh, extreme shocks have labels such as danger, severe shock, or XXX, or the skull and crossbones, etc. And in a lot of the trials, the actor, the, um, the learner confederate, uh, the student confederate would, um, after reaching the most extreme levels of shock, would just go silent. And sometimes he would complain about heart problems while it's getting to the um, more severe end of the scale, etc. Basically, the confederate is saying things in order to make the teacher question whether or not it's correct to keep going to administer these these uh, shocks that he doesn't know are fake but um, are getting increasingly large in value and uh, the experiment is made to find the break point at which the teacher refuses the experimenter's instructions and stops giving these shocks so uh, what were the results um, turns out 65 percent of all participants who were the teachers so they were all the teachers continued to the highest level of 450 volts so just let that sink in for a minute 65 percent that's almost two-thirds of all participants so the implications of this study are huge and they were huge at the point that they were at, uh, at the point in time they were released it suggests that um, the majority of common people uh, your everyday average citizen are capable of doing really terrible things when they're following following orders so uh, when they're given constant instructions and given the pressure from a higher authority they're able to deliver seemingly lethal sometimes electric shocks which is crazy it suggests that uh, the majority of um, human beings are easily capable of obedience uh, so those are the main those are the main implications of the Milgram experiment, and then Milgram also conducted several variations that gave some valuable insight into which factors are uh, important when you're looking at whether or not um, humans are likely to obey or not. So um, one of the variations looked at the um, authority. So factors. So one was authority, and in, th in this variation, uh, usually the experimenter in the original wore like this um, uniform, this gray lab coat, in order to signify his authority. So in this variation, the experimenter is called away, and then the role of the experimenter is taken over by an ordinary person. So it, it's, it's another confederate, but this time this confederate is in everyday clothes instead of a lab coat. So this signifies a lower... Um, sense of authority in the experimentary role. So when this happens, the obedience level drops by drops to 20%. So that's a pretty significant drop from, what, what was it, 65% to 20%? That's a huge drop. So that implies that the perceived level of authority in the um, authority figure is super important for how, to what extent the um, participant obeys. Uh, there was also what was called a two-teacher condition. So in the two-teacher condition, um, the participant, the, uh, the participant could, instead of directly applying the shock, pressing the switches to apply the shock, they could instead instruct an assistant teacher, assistant teacher who was another confederate, to press the switches for them. So this takes away the direct pressing of the switches by the um, participant. And when this happened, in this uh, variation of the, of the experiment, 92.5% of the 
of the participants went to the maximum. And this implies that um, the directness of the punishment that they're inflicting takes a heavy toll on whether or not they're able to uh, carry out the punishment when instructed to. So when this um, this direct direct contact pressure is taken away from them and they can instead tell someone else to do it, similar to what the uh, experimenter is doing in the original, uh, the obedience increases by a lot because they're not the actual ones doing the, uh, the physical punishment. Um, there's there was also touch proximity. Proximity. So this is a similar idea to the previous one, except in the opposite direction. And in, in this variation of the um, scenario, the teacher, the participant, actually had to force the learner's hand down onto a shock plate uh, when they refused to participate after 150 volts. So once again, it's not, it wasn't an actual shock plate, but the participant had to actually physically touch the learner confederate and force his hand down onto the shock plate. So when this happened, uh, the obedience dropped to 30% from 65%, which should make sense considering, if, if following the logic of the previous two teacher condition, so when you're more removed from the punishment, it's easier to carry out. But in this case, you're, it's the opposite. You're less removed, you're right there, you're touching the guy, and you're forcing him down. So it's direct contact, direct punishment. So people naturally feel more uncomfortable with carrying out this kind of punishment and therefore obedience drops. And, um, and the last condition we're going to, talk, going to talk about is the absent experimenter. The absent experimenter condition um, made it so that instead of the experimenter confederate actually being there ordering the um, participant to keep going, he instead prompted the um, participant by telephone from another room, so he wasn't actually in the same room as the participant. So when this happened, obedience dropped from 65% to 20.5%, which is, which implies that, uh, once again, that the authority figure is very important, and not only is his perceived authority, his um, appearance and his lab coat, not only are those important, but his actual just physical presence in the room is also important. So proximity of authority figure is directly re related to obedience. That's what this condition um, suggested. So those that's uh, those are all the basic um, factors. Some of the basic factors that Milgram tinkered with in order to explore what really gets to the obedience of humans. And um, so uh, that that just about covers the most important um, obedience case study in psychology. Uh, and those are those. Uh, that's pretty much the foundation for obedience as a whole. Um, if you're in a psychology course currently, in an intro level psychology course, this is probably the case study that they will cover the most in class, and that you have to know the most in depth. So make sure you know the implications of the experiment, the setup, and the varying factors of obedience that the um, the experiment revealed. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you guys um, have a better idea of what obedience is and how and what factors um, affect obedience now. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it.